Hello everybody, welcome back. And if you are new, welcome. My name is Chris. It is Friday night, September the 9th, and I've been meaning to do this video for literally almost a year. Last year, it was in the winter. I wanna say it was October, so almost a year. I did kind of my hidden gems and underrated fragrances, and it was part one. I have been meaning to do a part two. Well, tonight is part two. So I'm gonna finish out the ones I wanted to show I've picked up a couple since then. Some of them are new, newer. Some of them I don't have a ton of experience with because I bought them maybe in the early summer and they're more cold weather fragrances. But some of them are whimsical, some you've maybe heard me talk about, some I've never talked about before. And they're not gonna be hidden gems and underrated fragrances for everybody. Some of these really have a very particular you know, niche that they're going for. Many of these are not very universally appealing and would be appealing really to a, in my opinion, a small group of people. But if you are that person and you're looking for something fun or funky or maybe something that you've never heard of, maybe I'll talk about it in this video. And before I get started, if you have any underappreciated hidden gems, I'd love to hear about it in the comments because I have purchased several fragrances based on many of your recommendations. And in fact, one fragrance in here is a fragrance that was recommended to me by a subscriber who is now a friend of mine. She recommended this, so I'll be showing that in a moment. But since the sun is going down, this is my second video of the night. I'm gonna go ahead and just get started. Listen, if, someone, if other people have spoken about this, it just means that I haven't watched everybody's videos. Um, and, and before I talk about this one that literally nobody ever talks about, I actually went to YouTube and I searched to see if anybody had done any videos and the only video that popped up was mine, the one from spring of 2021, I think it was March 2021, this was in a haul video. And one of the most underrated hidden gems absolutely by far is this one I'm holding in my hand right now. It is by the House of Lubon, one of my very favorite florals of all time, a fragrance I've spoken about ad nauseum, Black Jade, it was in my very first video. It's a gorgeous fragrance. I still love it. I haven't gotten sick of it. And actually it was a gift from my husband for Christmas and he just knocked it out of the park so well that the next Christmas he ended up buying me this one by Lumen and this is called Epidur. A completely different fragrance from Black Jade even though it is this is a fruity floral. This is really a plum based fragrance and this is a plum like no other plum. This is not like the plum in Marc Jacobs' Decadence. I have several designer fragrances that have plum in them, and the plum is very different. Those are very saccharine. They're very thick. They're very sweet, almost overly sweet. The plum in here is like a perfect plum that you would pick up in the grocery store. It's perfect ripeness. You peel off the, the bitter, sour skin, and then you have that pulp, the fruit and then you made like the most delicious you juiced it and you made the most pristine plum juice this is the plum that's in here it is so incredibly delicious there are also white flowers in here which i get more in the dry down what i do get absolutely is a violet sweetness so there is violet in here if you've ever smelt a real violet that that aroma is is very beautiful it's a delicate sweetness and it, it does smell purple so there is a gorgeous violet sweetness in here. It gives it a little powderiness. And I wanna say there's something that smells a little bit honeyed. There, it's sweet in the dry down. So vanilla or tonka, and it has this sweet woody dry down, but the plum still remains throughout this fragrance. I originally started wearing this in the wintertime because it was a Christmas gift. And so in my mind, it is a winter fragrance and this thing has great performance, particularly when you spray it on clothes. But it's a spectacular, fresh, very wonderful fragrance to wear in the warmer months too. So this is definitely a year-round fragrance. It is totally beautiful, underrated. One of my friends here on YouTube, she's very active on Instagram, she bought this fragrance and she loves it. So it's the only other person I know that owns this fragrance. It's just so beautiful and it's gorgeous, very underrated in my opinion. Now, now one that I showed only one other time is one by Jo Malone, and this is called Poppy and Barley. And I posted this on Instagram maybe a week after I did the video, and I got so many people 
telling me that it was like their favorite fragrance. They absolutely loved it. And you really never hear anything about this one. You hear about all the other Joe Malone's, particularly wood sage and sea salt, but you never hear of this one. And this is a very underrated hidden gem. This is a, I bought it for the barley because I'm really into like fragrances that have a carbon, carbohydrate in them. I bought it for the barley, but it, and I bought it blindly. It surprised me. It is totally different than I expected, but this is a very fresh fig fragrance. So it's a fresh, clean fig. And I used to think I hated fig. I have so many fig fragrances that I picked up over the past year that I adore. So it turns out I don't hate fig. So this is a, a fresh, watery fig with some, a little bit of greenness, a little bit slightly bitter, just a touch. Very, very fresh, refreshing, maybe just a touch of florals and it dries down really soft. It smells kind of like a cereal. And that's really what I was looking for. That's why I bought it. It gets powdery in the dry down and there is a clean musk. You know, longevity is actually better than wood sage and sea salt. I would say four to six hours, you do have to overspray. This to me is a summertime fragrance. I won't be wearing this in the winter time, but a uh, lovely, very underrated hidden gem in my opinion. Okay, so the next one, whew, sun's really going down. What time is it? Sunset, 7.30 and it's 7 o'clock. So the next one I spoke about in my, um, my, my Chic Clean video, and it is by the Niche House for the scent of it. And the perfumer and CEO behind this fragrance has done a spectacular job. There are a lot of fragrances in the line that I would like to get a hold of. One of the fragrances, that, one of my favorite is, I think it's called Wasteland Warrior. That reminds me so much of one of my favorite fragrances of all time, L'Air du Desert Mail Cane. Um, I don't have it uh, quite yet, but it is a gorgeous fragrance. Now, my second favorite, I think, is this one called Nearly New. And this is kind of like a take on your skin, but better, but it has a lot more depth. Um, it is similar to not a perfume and that there is a little bit of that that musky aroma chemical thing going on but it is sweeter so it has a vanillic sweetness to it for sure and there is a powderiness a powdery floral in here that's not in not a perfume and it comes from iris so it's very powdery and dry almost dusty very very pleasant and this dries down on me, it pulls very woody in the dry down. And the only reason I mention that is I had one of my friends reach out to me and ask me if there was wood in here. And I said, oh, definitely, there's sandalwood or cedar. Because I didn't realize some people just really do not like any wood and fragrance at all. Um, in fact, she said, I don't like wood because it smells like a hamster cage. But so if you're that type of person that doesn't like woods in a fragrance, you this one is probably not going to be for you because on me it does have a, a strong sweet uh, woody dry down it pulls very woody on me and even though this isn't very loud it has great longevity it's quiet but it lasts like all day like at least eight hours on me so the one the one that I got on recommendation of my lovely friend Mariana she reached out in one of my other videos and I think it was you know underrated or I think I was talking about orange blossom fragrances and she recommended Venera Moria by Bordeaux and I already have um, Masai Mara that was in my original underrated video let me scooch over here so that was in my original video and that one is more of a cold weather fragrance this is a warm weather fragrance or a fragrance if you are in the warmer states, Florida, Texas, California, I would definitely, you can wear a lot of fragrances that I can't wear year round. It just gets so darn cold here that some of the fresher fragrances that I would love to wear, they do not make it in the bitter cold here. So I guessed that this was Neroli when I smelled it. I guessed it was Neroli. And Neroli, Orange Blossom, and Pettigrain, you know, they're all, they all come from the Orange Blossom flower. They're just really harvested differently. Um, Neroli and Orange Blossom, the essential oil that's used to make perfume is acquired from the orange blossom blossom, the flower. They're just acquired differently. They're extracted differently, so they have a little bit different smell. Neroli is a little bit more green, and this has a little greenness, so that's why I thought it was Neroli, but it's not. It actually is Pettigrain, and Pettigrain um, are the essential oils that are acquired when you distill the like the twigs and the leaves of the orange blossom so you still get that 
orange blossom nuance, the florally nuance, but it is greener and it's a little bit more bitter. So, but this one never gets bitter because it has a really nice vanillic sweetness to it to kind of temper any bitterness. And it's just a touch citrusy. I'm sure there are some citruses in here. I'm gonna guess bergamot, something that's citrusy in here, but it's one of those, it falls along the lines of like Love Don't Be Shy, um, kind of Guimauve de Noel that I already have that I love. They're not the same, but you know, you're gonna get in the same ballpark. If you like those same fragrances, this is a very, very, very affordable option. I think this is a cologne. Is this cologne concentration? No, it's an EDP, but I will tell you this acts more like an EDT. It's light, I would say, you know, four hours. But this was a great grab and go fragrance that I wore um, in the summer, really, really enjoyed it. And um, thank you, Mariana, for the recommendation. See, if you tell me to get a fragrance, more than likely I'm gonna go get it. And I've been very, very happy with almost every recommendation people have given me. So the next one I'm going to admit, I, I felt a little silly getting, but I originally bought this one because I wanted to, I'm obsessed with the note of whipped cream. I'm a big gourmand lover. And I actually went to Fragrantica and did a search, like all the perfumes that had whipped cream in them. And this next one, Candy Love by Escada came out. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm not sure that this is gonna be a fragrance for me, but if it has whipped cream, I'm gonna get it. And I don't think it was very expensive at all. I wanna say $40 or, no, $50 or less. Um, and this was a big surprise because it looks, well, when you look at it, my expectations were on the low side. I'm actually impressed. I'm actually very impressed. I don't have, I only have paper to spray on. I'm actually very impressed by the way this smells. So this is an apple-centered fragrance. Oh my gosh, this is a really nice smelling. So this is a fresh red apple. I mean, didn't expect it. This is a very fresh, almost realistic red apple. Very juicy, ripe red, like a crunchy red apple. And there's a rose in here and some citruses. Of course, there's whipped cream, which is, uh, is more apparent, I guess, in the dry down because it does get creamy and sweet. But this is a very happy, fun fragrance that I think many people would enjoy. It's along the lines of, it's very similar. When I first started wearing perfumes, I was drawn to the Escada line because they were affordable and they were fun and fruity fragrances. And that's what I enjoyed for a big part of my fragrance life. And I would just kind of every other year or so get whatever new Escada fragrance came out. So that still maintains some of that Escada esqueness the escada core but they then they go out and venture out on their own so a really nice fresh crisp juicy crunchy red apple rose citrusy fun refreshing fragrance that dries down sweet and i forgot to say this bottle as i'm holding it in my hand <laughs> it's heavy it looks like cheap and plastic but it's not it's a very i mean the lid is thin but the bottle is great and you said it like this but I think this is a really great fragrance and again I paid 40 or 50 dollars I want to say closer to 40 so excellent perfume for the price and just a, a really fun underrated fragrance in my opinion I don't really see again if you talk about it I'm just I just haven't got to your video yet another one I don't think I showed this in my um it's in the box because it wasn't a summertime fragrance for me I think I showed it on one video, smell expensive on a budget. Um, and I've only seen one other person talk about it. That would be Gabby the Fragrantician, and she's a hoot. If you haven't, if you don't know Gabby, you should check out her channel. She's very fun and has a great nose and very entertaining, but I've actually seen her talk about this one as well. And this is L'Ange Noir by Givenchy. We both actually own the other flankers, the Anjou Dimon, which I absolutely love, and it's a spectacular designer fragrance. But I'm just, just gonna cut to the chase and say, this is the feminine version of Dior Homme Intense. I find Dior Homme Intense a stunning fragrance. I've worn it myself. I gave it to my husband as a gift because I wanted him to wear it. I thought it smelled great. He loves it. And um, this is the feminine version, in my opinion. It's a little bit sweeter. It's a little bit more powdery. There's almond in here. There's iris. 
you know, it has vanilla and tonka in the dry down. It's just a gorgeous fragrance that just does not get the airtime that I think it deserves. I mean, Dior Homme Intense is all over the place and considered a masterpiece. It's excellent. Nobody talks about this one. And so if you like Dior Homme Intense but you find it too masculine, this is a wonderful feminine version. Okay, this next one is not going to be for everybody. <laughs> Certainly a hidden gem for certain people. I find it very fun. I'm one of those crazy people that, you know, I like fragrances. I'll get a fragrance just because it's fun and different, and this is certainly one of them. It's by Don Spencer Horowitz, and it's called Avocado Toast. I almost showed this in my clean and chic fragrance video because it, to me, it kind of reminded me of the, the clean girl, the chic girl with, who's a rebel, who just is a little bit, has a little bit of rebellion in them. They, they wear the clean and chic stuff, but then they put a beat up black leather biker jacket on. They just have that little edge to them. And this one is like the perfect, I think I read somewhere, somewhere that this was like the perfect hipster, hipster scent. Now I didn't say that. I just read it somewhere that this was like the perfect hipster scent. Now it is very, very different. And for the first five minutes or so, I don't love it because it smells like, almost smells like a jalapeno pepper, like a spicy green pepper. I don't love that part. It smells hot. It almost smells like a hot pepper. But that does not last very long. I don't know what it is. After that kind of burns off in five minutes, it gets to the, the more gourmand. It is a gourmand for sure aspect of the fragrance. It's a, non, it's a savory gourmand. It's very creamy. It's very buttery. It's very nutty. And this one is new to my collection this year. I haven't worn it a ton because I, this to me kind of reads cold weather. So I've only kind of tested it around the house a couple times. It's on the quiet side, but to me, this is kind of sweater, sweater weather, fall weather, real fun, cozy, nutty, creamy, creamy like an avocado. I do think avocado is actually as avocado as a note. I'm sure there's some sort of note in here. Uh, sandalwood for sure. There's definitely sandalwood and maybe vanilla, but for the right person, I think this is a tremendous, fun, hidden gem. And if you've heard of it, let me know in the comments because I'm pretty sure I've never seen anyone talk about this one. And maybe because it's just not very universally appealing and it's just for the right person, I think it would be a real hidden gem. I might not get to all my perfumes before it really gets dark here. It is, yeah, it's almost sunset. So I'm gonna try to get through them. This one is like the perfect, this one went away for the winter time but this is the perfect holiday scent, I'm telling you. This is Winter Holidays in a Bottle. This is called Calamity Jane, and it's by Outlaw Cologne. They, I think they first started out making soaps, but they make fragrances. This is by far my favorite one, and this is delicious. This is orange, cinnamon, clove, and whiskey. That's it, that's what you get. This is like literally cold weather holidays in a bottle. And I posted this to Instagram last year and I had, I know one person purchased it from my posting and she loved it. It just smells like, you know those scented pine cones that smell like orange and clove and cinnamon, they just smell like the holidays. That's what this smells like, but a lot better. And even though it is a cologne, it has really good performance. And the first time I wore this to work, I think it was in December, literally I counted five people who, who came into my office that day said, you smell like Christmas, verbatim. So Christmas in a bottle, winter holidays in a bottle. You have to like orange, cinnamon, and clove to enjoy this. And it does have like a, a non-sweet booziness to it, but I absolutely love it. Total hidden gem, absolutely underrated for a good holiday scent. Okay, the next one I wanna to get to, I don't have a whole lot of experience with it, but I do wanna to get to it because, like I said, I have never heard anyone talk about this. It's going to be a hidden gem for the right person. And it is by Leromatica, Leromatica, and it's called Kulfi. And I bought this from a fragrance store or shop called Ministry of Scent. This fragrance smells just like Kulfi. It's absolutely delicious. It is somewhere kind of like, it's, it's served cold, and it is like a frozen custard with a lot of spices. So very, very heavy on the cardamom. So, oh, so good. 
I sprayed on my right left hand earlier. Yeah, so very strong cardamom. It has vanilla. There's coconut and sandalwood. So if you like all those notes, you would probably really, really enjoy this one. This is a cozy fragrance, very spicy, very heavy on the uh, cardamom. It also has saffron, okay? Yeah, there's saffron in here. So it is sweet, but it's not overtly sweet. So if you don't like your sweet fragrances, you may like this. And they do, I, try, I got this as a sample first, so you don't have to blind buy if this is something you're interested in. I was given a large travel spray of this next fragrance, late spring, maybe early summer, and I fell in love with it, absolutely loved it. It is by the House of Venice, and it's called Andalusian Soul. This is gorgeous, and for me, it is a hidden gem. It is a, um, it's a boozy, butterscotchy, amber vanilla. There is a little bit of greenness in here. I get a little bit of honey in here, and I'm forgetting where I sprayed it. I sprayed it over here, and it has a little bit of smokiness as it dries down. So some little bit of smoky, some sweet smoky incense, and it has this really nice. I get a leather accord. I don't like all leather, but it has a really nice smooth leather. And I think because it's combined with these sweeter notes, you know, the amber, the vanilla, it's just never animalic, but it's definitely present. You have a kind of, I think leather gives fragrance a lot of structure, but I don't like it when it's overtly animalic. The travel size, the travel spray is gone and I'm glad that I went up to a full bottle of this. And with that, literally the sun is down. Um, I'm gonna call it quits. There's some that I haven't talked about and I'll just put that in another video. But if I didn't talk about any hidden gems that you love, drop me a note down below. More than likely, I'm probably going to pick up a bottle if you really love it. And thank you again for sticking around. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.